Hello, this is Miguel's Cash, your president and CEO of Real Estate in LasTennis.com. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, okay, so today I'm going to be doing a interview with uh, with uh, with some clients. Okay, they're interested in a couple projects here in Las Terrenas, and they are from California, husband and wife couple. Uh, they are looking to call Las Terrenas home in a short period of time, and they are working with myself and my company to find the a place that they can truly say they love to live. So this is uh, we've had a ton of conversation over WhatsApp and a lot of information has been transferred, but this is going to be our first phone call together. So uh, enjoy the call. Hopefully you learn a lot. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to be touching base on, but it's probably going to be related to the lifestyle, uh, the projects they're looking at. So you get a chance to hear a little bit about the couple projects. They have already decided that they're going to move forward on a project called Bonita Hills. So they're already in touch with Vladimir. So all these things are going to happen and they're waiting for me to dial them. So I'm going to go ahead and call them right now. You guys, uh, enjoy the video. Take notes because this is important information. Okay. And for you brokers uh, out there or real estate agents that watch the channel as well, I know there's a lot of you. A uh, great opportunity for you to learn exactly how you need to be talking with your clients the information they need to get uh, and all those other details okay because it's not just about helping my clients but also uh, I want to go ahead and help you guys out and help you be better brokers better agents out there in the field understand what your clients want understand the properties and uh, try to help your clients love where they live all right guys let's do this call hi Miriam how's it going <laughs> hi Alfonso good morning good morning how are you good sorry for that little delay there I was just uh, getting a couple things together and I was dialing you Okay, great, great. How's uh, how's everything going? Yeah, everything is everything is going good. You know, we um we heard from the the, the lawyer Vladimir. and from Vladimir and um what did we we sent over? Did he want to know an email address? We sent it over kind of late like, like last night. Kind of the, the yes, I saw that. that. So we sent over email. So we're gonna well, we're waiting to hear from him. He's gonna send some documents for us. Perfect. Yes, I was uh, I was in the loop on that chat as well, so I was reading in on that. I can see he uh, need a little info, and he's going to send you some stuff. I'll follow up for you a little bit later today as well. Okay. Now we are discussing uh, the Bodilla Hill uh, unit and the uh, upcoming project. Correct. For 2025. Let's start with Bodilla Hills first, because this is what we, you know, this is what's available right now. This is what's on the table right now. Yes, I agree. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, for the for the, the Bonita Hill, okay, I, I think. It, it, about the LLCs, and I think you've, you've done a YouTube with them on the LLCs. Yes. So I, I, do, I, I do something similar here in terms of protecting things that I, I buy. Okay. And it, uh, LLC serves, I think, that's still in the process in the DR mm -hmm. as in the United States and Canada. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? The amount of anonymity and protection from lawsuits. Um, Correct. An asset to these. Yeah, you know what, I, I, I'll run through that really quick with you. Uh, th like you said, there's that video with Vladimir, but I'll give you my uh, my two cents on it. So the LLC over here in the in the Dominican Republic, uh, an LLC, it's not called an LLC, it's called an SLR, okay? but So if you hear somebody saying SLR, that's synonymous with an LLC, okay? Just as a heads up. Uh, so Vladimir at Guzman Ariza can set up the SLR, or as you would say, LLC, a corporation, and costs on a corporation run anywhere from fourteen to sixteen hundred dollars in and around that range to set it up. Time frame to get it set up can take anywhere from, if it's expedited, it can take two three weeks. Uh, if it's just a normal time frame, let's say six to eight weeks to set that up. Okay. Um, the benefits of doing that, specifically in your situation, which is confiture. Okay, you have a project that's confiture. You have those tax-free advantages. Fifteen years, no property taxes. And then you also have no 3% transfer tax, which is something that many North Americans uh, look forward to and it, it drives them in the purchase of those specific properties. So when you do put it in a corporation, what you're doing essentially is obviously you're protecting your asset. Uh, God forbid somebody falls, gets you know you get in a car accident, something, anything unforeseen accident like that happens, it keeps your asset protected as you do in uh, the US right now. So that same function exists. Another function that exists here in the DR that I like about it is the inheritance portion of it, uh, the probate portion. If you, God forbid something happens, and for myself, for example, if something happens, it is a lot easier for my heirs to get possession of that property via the corporation because then they would assume the shares of the corporation versus having to go through that entire probate uh, process, which can be expensive, as Vladimir can explain better, and can take a year to year and a half is what he has explained to me. So that's another advantage of the corporation. And short-term advantage of the corporation financially is 
If you come back to me and say, hey, Cash, listen, we love Bonita Hills, but we want to move on and we want to sell it. If you own it in a corporation, that makes things so much easier for me and makes your property that much more marketable because now you can actually, via the sale of your corporation that owns the property, those rights can transfer over and on to the new buyer, the new owner of the corporation. So therefore, the new buyer is able to not have to pay the 3% land transfer tax. And they also get the remaining portion of confiture, the tax-free advantage that's left. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Does that apply to uh, your hairs as well? Does that apply to your hairs as well? Let me let, let me uh, understand the question. No, because you know, these things, you know, it, it, it applies to you because if you die, it's easier for them to assume the shares. As with the corporation, I have it on a million shares, so all we do is transfer yes. the shares. Okay, got it. So it's easier to do that rather than go through probate okay. or decide who gets what. Understood. What you can do on your end, and obviously I don't know uh, your family dynamics or anything like that, but hypothetically speaking, if you have uh, children and uh, they're of age, actually that's one thing I don't know, we'll ask Vladimir about, is the age, age uh, is there age restrictions on somebody that can own shares of the corporation? So say for example, your children are over 18 and uh, you wanna put 10% in uh, one child, another 10% in another child, another 10% in, in the other, they'll have shares of that corporation. So God forbid, when and if that time comes then vladimir would be the phone call and it would and this is kind of how i'm setting it up for myself however my daughter's only six so i'm going to ask him if she can own shares of the corporation um that would be the phone call and then at that point vladimir would be able to reassign the shares of the corporation and have all the documents there so the transition of your properties into whoever's name would be controlled by you even after uh and make it very simple for that person so I think, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a big, big advantage of putting in a corporation. My, my next question is, is this all about, um, I, I think I saw a YouTube that you were, you were discussing the, uh, the distance of the, the airport. Yes. So that's the data. Yes. And I, I think, let me tell me if I'm if I understood correctly. There is an airport within 30 minutes, but it's, the flights are, are pretty restricted. There's an airport that was two, three hours away, and you, you mentioned the ten thousand, the ten thousand room, and I, I, I assume that we were talking about hotel rooms. That when you have that amount of hotel rooms, the airline will have more seats, and you have more varied, you know, cities going to direct to that. I, am I? Would I understand it correctly? Yeah, you know what? Let me. I'm uh, just making notes as you ask the question, so I can can dive into it. Okay, so let's talk about the airports first. The airports, uh, access to Las Serenas. There's one airport, and watch that video because I. I I think I actually did the drive to the airport and then took you inside the airport. So you can actually feel the the true distance, okay? So if you haven't seen that, tell me if you can't find it, I'll forward it to you. The name of the airport is E-L space C-A-T-E-Y, L Cate. So this one, depending on where you're at in Las Trinas, where I'm at, uh, well, where you would be at in Playa Bonita, because that's where I'm at, uh, with this first purchase of yours is you're going to be 20 minutes 20 minutes unless you get stuck behind a dump truck or something you're going to be 20 minutes maybe 18 minutes and i timed it out and that's not me speeding and it is one of the most beautiful drives you've ever done in your life it's up through the rolling hills along the ocean so it, it, it's it, it's actually quite mesmerizing and probably one of the most beautiful drives i've done uh and you'll see that in the video so that is about let's say 15 to 20 minutes away from you um the airport can house six Boeing 747s, okay? The reason that's important at one time, the reason that's important is because it's already been built to scale upwards. It's one thing that they have a tiny little airport that can only hold one plane, and now the process of Lost Train is growing into a major destination involves building a new airport. We both know that that could take an enormous amount of time, but it's already scaled to be able to handle it. Uh, and again, you'll see that in the video. So that's a positive. Uh, the other aspect of El Cate that I like its proximity to Las Trinas, the scalability of the airport, and also now we're diving into that uh, the 10,000 room element of it. Before we talk about San Domingo, we'll talk about San Domingo Airport in a second. I was making a note so I don't forget. So the 10,000 rooms, what I'm referring to there is, and I had I have a long interview with the mayor. I don't know if you had a chance to watch that that one. That's a good one. It's about an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so airlines determine their flight patterns and the the places they choose to go on a regular basis based on the number of available rooms so las terrenas is currently i believe at like six thousand 
uh, spots that somebody could rent to stay. Okay, it's not just hotel rooms, it's also Airbnbs. So Las Terrenas is currently at about 6,000 or about at a 4,000 room deficit to getting to, get to that 10,000. As soon as we hit that number, and when you come here, you'll see we are going to get to that number very soon because there's a lot of rooms, uh, inventory that's being completed and coming out of the pipeline. Once we hit that 10,000, then other major airlines and other routes open up. I think a few of the, New York was already a route that was coming directly to Los Arenas. Uh, that will restart in, uh, North Carolina was coming. You're gonna start to see, Miami already comes in from, uh, into El Cate Airport, Canada. We have uh, Montreal, Toronto. There's certain flights that come in direct from Europe as well. So you're gonna start to see that expand quickly. You're coming in from California though, right? Yes, right, right now, yes, yeah. So I, what I'm imagining you're gonna be doing, and I'll talk about this next, is Santa, is Santa Domingo. I actually just purchased a piece of real estate in Santa Domingo, a uh, specific area that I talk about in some of my videos. It's called Piantini. I don't know if you want to jot that down. I'll spell it for you. P-I-A-T-I-N-I. P-I-A-T-I-N-I. The reason that's important. Uh, well, first we'll talk about the airport. So the airport is, I've done it from Las Vegas, from Playa Bonita to San Domingo Airport in less than two hours. Not going more than about 15 kilometers over the speed limit, maybe 10. So not excessively speeding, but not going exactly or under the speed limit. Um, that was okay. un under two hours on a perfectly safe highway, not going through a bunch of little towns. It is a direct highway all the way. And again, I have a video of that one too. So it's a direct highway right to San Domingo Airport. Okay, San Domingo Airport has long-term parking, perfectly safe. Uh, that's also in the video. Uh, you can also take a car service to San Domingo Airport. That costs about $160 to $180, depending on who you get. Uh, we have some companies we can refer that are very reliable. So that is a very easy and direct shot for you. There is nothing complex about it. It's not that you would land in San Domingo, then you have to go through all these little towns and villages, and it takes you four and a half hours to get there. That's not the case. When I talk about Piantini, I bring that up only because we're talking about San Domingo. If and when you need your city fix, and this is what happens to myself and my wife, sometimes we need our city fix and the beach life is, is great and we love it, but sometimes we want to just enjoy the city for a little bit. We hop in the car, drive the two hours, go to Piantini, uh, check ourselves into the Hilton over there, which is right in front of where is going to be the World Trade Center for the Dominican Republic. It's being built right now. It's almost, I'd say, about a year away from full completion. Uh, we check in there and we have access to the best malls in the world. We have access to the best restaurants. San Domingo is becoming a culinary uh, gem right now. So you have access to all those great things only two hours away from you. You have access to Ikea, Costco. Costco's brand here in the Dominican Republic is called Price Mart. Okay, so you have access to Price Mart. You have access to uh shopping you have access to pf changs is there like every major anthony's coal fire pizza it's a big thing here on the uh, east coast in florida area that just opened up there so that's important to note too it's not just that you're sitting on a remote island in the middle of the caribbean you're in an actual country that has everything and more that you would want kind of off topic but tied in with the san domingo chat well, we want to know everything that's good okay okay good good i just wanted to explain that portion too because that you know th these are the reasons why i chose to move it's not just a move to las serenas it's moved to the dominican republic because you can find a beach at, you're in california well, how many beaches are there so th it's not Absolutely. yeah it's not just about the beach it's about the quality of life but also we are north americans and we do sometimes need those fixes uh and if you're sitting let's say for example you uh, i looked at a country uh, a little island called roatan maybe you did too off the coast of honduras I went back and forth there multiple times about 10 years ago because I was thinking that's a good idea. But that is truly living on a remote island all the time. And if I want to get away from that remote island, I need to hop on a plane and leave. And that that reality, and actually actually because of the, uh, the medical backgrounds of you guys, the, the medical care and the uh, advancement, you guys will be able to speak better to it once you get here. The hospitals in San Domingo are phenomenal. Okay, and I like that I have world-class help if needed right there which is a short two hours away so i'm in windsor ontario canada that's where i live that's where i'm from originally right over the border from detroit yeah, okay. yeah, from detroit, Michigan, yeah. yeah exactly so as you know our canadian medical system is just a complete disaster uh, unless you've been exposed to it you wouldn't realize it you would think it's good because it's free but uh it is a complete disaster so if you want help in canada i have to get to London, Ontario. London, Ontario is about two and a half hours away from me. Or 
go over the border to Detroit and get help. I'm actually better off in Las Trinas being so close to Santa Domingo than I am living in Canada when it comes to medical help. Okay, so very advanced in San Domingo. You have access to that. The ambulance services take you right there. There's airlift options to get you there as well. Uh, a lot of that is included in your insurance policies, and I'll, I'll guide you and direct you with the insurance company that we use for local health insurance. Um, and then obviously the option of flying out to Miami. If need be, in a, bad, in a horrible situation, you always have the option of getting airlifted to Miami, which is about an hour and a half. So that's a little bit off topic there. Talking about hospitals now, but I heard a little bit about insurance there. To, to me, um, I, 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 can, I work for the state of California. I, I kind of retired and back to work again, but um, I do. I kind of have to kind of check because I do have insurance. Okay, I, mean, I would like to have insurance in the, from the state, so um, I, I know I, I would have to figure it out. You know what you have to do. So, Oh, I'll kind of like from my from my experiences. I'll kind of give you a quick run through. My wife usually deals with this stuff, but I, I got I've got some exposure via that. Uh, so when we travel back and forth, we're usually back and forth within three months. Like we'll come and touch down, come and visit. I have businesses still here in Canada, so I come back. Uh, my wife wants to see some family stuff like that. So that being said, there is travel insurances that are very effective and affordable that people can utilize when they are going back and forth hypothetically you're going back and forth from california maybe you're spending two and a half months go back for a week see family go visit some patients whatever it is and then come back you're touching down there might be options which you can talk to your insurance provider on a travel insurance because you're not there full time you're, you're traveling so those are some options that were available to us via the policies through, uh, through a company here in Canada that we were able to utilize. So we will get that traveler's insurance when we are gone there, um, and that protects us. But then we also got local insurance, which was relatively cheap. I think it's like, I think we're paying like, don't hold me to this, but I think like 100 to $150 a month. And it covers you for everything. It gets you airlifted from Los Trenas to, uh, to San Domingo if needed. And, and uh, you, you do need that insurance just if you're gonna visit the hospitals. Uh, and stuff like that. Now, when you come here, you're going to be blown away if you've never been. The cost of medication is so cheap. It's just like mind blowing how cheap, uh, how it's almost how it should be, is what it is. And I don't want to like pass any judgment or opinions or anything like that. But it, when you're getting antibiotics for like something's wrong and you're, you're going to pick up uh, penicillin, I don't remember what it is, but something ridiculous like I'm paying like $2.60 or something, the equivalent of for it. Like it, it's just like, mind-blowingly cheap the, the, so for medication that's needed insurance is not important because it's so cheap uh, I heard a story of one of my clients who is from Boston um, he has a bagel company if he's listening he he, um, he has a bagel company right across from Harvard University he bought some property in Los Trenas when he was landing he's about 42 or 41 when he was landing into Santa Domingo coming in from Boston uh, he felt really sick he felt like maybe it's kind of like a heart situation happening so he landed and he was alone and he went straight to the hospital in Santa Domingo um, he said he was blown away by the quality of service how quick they responded to him and all the tests and everything they did so he was there for three days he was fine uh, I don't know what the end result of that was but he was fine he ended up in Las Trinas he said when they handed him the bill the cardio uh, the cardiologist he was expecting a couple thousand dollars and it was to the tune of like $225 to the cardiologist. And he was just like mind blown. And that, that's why I think you guys, it'll be interesting. I can't wait to get your insight once you come here and you get exposed to all this stuff. Uh, it was just the quality of care and the cost of care all ties into quality of life, right? You're able to afford these. Well, the average, average person is able to afford a healthy lifestyle here. That's what my point is. Yes, yeah. So all that you know, we're talking US, US currency, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm talking US currency. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. It's the reserve currency of the world. That's far. That's far. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see how long this holds, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that might be off topic. Uh, can uh, nurses work from uh, you know over there? Foreign nurses? Yeah, you know what? You are. That, 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 that's a really good question because I think what you can't do. And Vladimir can, you can dive a little bit deeper. Vladimir is amazing. Uh, he's an amazing attorney and he'll really provide you with a lot of good insight. Uh, my insight on that and understanding is you can't go get a job at the hospital. 
okay? But if you went and got a job at the hospital, you would be paid Dominican wages, which I believe a nurse, actually, <laughs> another story, my, my sister-in-law came to visit us. <clears throat> she works at Henry Ford. She got a job at Henry Ford here in Detroit. It's one of the top hospitals in uh, Detroit, Michigan. And she graduated from Canada. Uh, right about the time she was graduating, she came down to visit us and she loved Australia and there was a new little hospital opening. So, and I, I know the doctor that's opening it. So I introduced, introduced her to him. She did a whole interview and then they gave her her, her offer. And her offer was, <laughs> was $360, $360 a month. <laughs> okay, which, which, which is interesting. That, that's the going wage for a RN, a registered nurse over there. So what you wouldn't be looking to do, unless you were looking to donate your time, which is a different conversation, uh, what you wouldn't be looking to do is get a job in the medical field. You would be able to start your own practice, uh, your own co uh, uh, consultative kind of services, or anything like that that is your own business, you would be able to do. And there's no restrictions on that. But if you want to get a job, then there's it becomes complex. So I don't know if whatever your plan would be, if you want to start offering some services, you start offering services. And it's that straightforward. And if you want to open a corporation, start a corporation to, uh, to operate those services, then you talk to Vladimir and you create a corporation and then that corporation uh, offers those services. So it's pretty straightforward and simple. I do like that about this country as well. How how old are your children? Do you mind me asking? Uh, we have them from uh, 19, 20, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. The diversity, if we're talking racial diversity, uh, age diversity, and uh, I'll touch on all topics. So we'll talk about racial, then we'll talk about age, and then we'll talk about gender, right? All three of those. So. I so let, let's, let's hit on gender first, because I have a small family. It's me, my wife, and my daughter. So for me, my uh, comfort level, and I'll give you an example of, currently I'm in Canada. I'm in Canada for a couple of weeks right now. So that's where I'm talking to you from. Um, I am more comfortable and feel much safer when we are in the Dominican Republic, okay? Uh, I was about to do a video, because I, I, I rarely watch the news. Since I went there, I stopped watching it, because I started to realize it's just, it's more of a, a so I, if I watch it, it's for entertainment purposes. Uh, not really news. So I was watching it last night for a few minutes, uh, C CBS, and they were talking about the school shoot. There was about three different episodes of shootings, mass shootings that were happening. And it really is not even headline news anymore. It's just commonplace. So now there's no reaction to it. It's just how, it, it's not a matter of if, it's just when and where it happens. We approach it as it's you or them. It shouldn't have to be a teacher's job to protect your life. But with a battle over gun control, people are afraid that they're going to lose their gun rights altogether. Be the hardest lesson of all. The exercise, you're having to shoot at an adult. Are you prepared to have to kill one of your students? Guns in the classroom. Uh, so safety-wise, with them over there, I feel very, very comfortable uh, because that's not in the culture. People... For whatever reason, mental health, uh, I don't know, the that's beyond my pay grade. I don't really understand it. But society in general, I feel, in North America has kind of taken a hard left turn. And these kind of things are becoming commonplace and acceptable. It doesn't exist there. It's not how people live there. It's not, um, it's not something that happens. Will it start to happen in 20, 30 years as they become more Americanized? Maybe. But as of right now, it's not. it doesn't exist. So on that level, I feel comfortable. That's safety-wise. Female-wise. Um, the Dominican culture overall is a very religious culture. It's very uh, Christian and Catholic. Uh, there's very, very high regard for women and children here. So I really like that aspect. People will stop and let women go first. Uh, if children are around, that is the utmost safe. Their safety is of most importance. Now, do they do things that's kind of an oxymoron? Like, will they stick four children on a uh, on a motorcycle and go to school? Yes. But that's just, that is what it is, and it's just, you know, an ends to a means. But overall safety, will somebody, can somebody get away with uh, the things that get that unfortunately happen in North America? No, because the safety and protection of women and children is of utmost importance in the culture, the Dominican culture, which I really do appreciate. So uh, you'll feel very comfortable in Las Trenas. You'll even feel very comfortable in Santa Domingo, a major city of 4 million people. But in Las Trenas specifically, you'll feel that. You'll, you'll feel the importance given to women and children. Um, 
racial diversity, obviously Caribbean uh, country combination of all races here. Uh, Lost Train is a little bit unique because we have the, the, the origins of it are kind of like the French and the Italians started to come over 30, 40 years ago and they started to settle the area. Uh, so you have, it's a very like European feel to Lost Train. That was one thing that we liked about it. Feels very European, a lot of French restaurants, a lot of Italian restaurants, uh, of course, a lot of Dominican restaurants. Uh, half the population speaks French. Uh, most of the Dominicans that live in Las Trinas speak French and Spanish and a little bit of English. So it's very diverse, very multicultural. Oh, wow. You, do you speak Spanish? No. Oh, you know, you know what? Honestly, I'm a little bit better at Spanish than she is. But I'm not just No, you are going to. You, you are going to be fully, fully functioning when you get there because French is a is one of the main languages in Los Trinos. You get to San Domingo, it's different. Now you got English and Spanish, and more people speak English in San Domingo because it's a major city. Okay. okay, so that's really good news that you speak your fluent in French. Wow, that really like expedites your uh, comfort level. For example, there's a gentleman, I think I might have connected you, maybe I didn't yet. His name is Bertrand. Uh, Bertrand will be instrumental in getting you prices and helping you out with some of the stuff you need to buy to put into Bonita Hills. TVs, I've used him for the last couple years. His guy's uh, prices are, are great and it includes delivery and includes installation so you buy tv in the rack and his guys will come put it in boom, 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 do it all he is uh from he's from france he speaks french wait my other question is because I, I i think you're in the, the airbnb so in terms of because we're looking at some stuff in jamaica at one point um in terms of two and three bedrooms in terms of airbnb which has the the, the highest demand in terms of you're thinking about an investment for Airbnb going to a two bedroom or a three bedroom? Yeah, uh, good question. I think uh, two bedrooms, two bedroom hits a sweet spot for most families nowadays. Uh, so let's look at the retirees. We'll start at that point. Um, you typically, and what I'm seeing typically there is husband and wife, and similar to you, two to four children uh, that are in that 20 to 40 range, right? It's very, you're kind of fit the profile per se. So what do they want? They want a spot, a room for themselves, and then they want a room for their family that's gonna come and visit, their children. They're gonna come independently at different times. Depending on the size of the family, sometimes maybe they want three bedrooms. Uh, so that being said, rental wise, Airbnb wise, most demand is on two bedrooms. Uh, I think one and three are falling about in the same perimeter of uh, the close seconds, okay? You do have some families that have more than, it'll be husband and wife in one room, two kids in one room, and uh, two kids in another room. Or you'll have two couples that travel together. Most of the time, you don't have two couples traveling together. Most of the time, it's husband and wife and two kids. So two bedroom by far. Uh, if I had to pick between one and three at that point, I would go three versus the one, because very often it's husband and wife and a kid or two. And that's where I would rather have a three versus a one. But if I couldn't have anything, I would definitely go the one over not being invested into the market. You know what I mean? Okay. The thing is, you know, we're, we're thinking, because I, I, I hear you and for me, I, I was getting to the same place. I, I'm just being tired of, of North America and, and, and living here and all the things that was happening. Yes. So, you know, I, I was, you know, one of the things we were thinking of initially were getting something in, in Jamaica because I'm originally from Jamaica. Okay, got it, and, got it. Um, but yeah, but the the violence and stuff down there, you know, I correct. You know, my brother, he's saying yeah, he's just he's just not going to go down because it, you know uh, he doesn't want to be you know living in fear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I saw this and I saw the Dominican Republic. I kind of you know went away, and that's when we decided to take a look and explore this. But I, I said that we were going to buy something because you know, sometimes I don't know what's going to happen. I, I don't know what's happening here. And it's just, <laughs> just I am listening to you sometimes and I'm hearing myself because I, I'm just getting tired. I'm just getting tired. Of the every, every day hey, you, know, just, yeah. you know what it is, Al Alfonso? I also think something else. I, 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 cause I, I self analyze kind of the whole thought process of what we share. And I think if you're a logical person, it doesn't take much to say this is not fixable. <laughs> 
where we've gone at this moment in time, it can't be fixed with a new president or prime minister, or it, this is going to go on long after we leave earth i feel like this has gone uh, the tipping scale i think is has already hit so i think if you're a logical person and you're not politically swayed or uh racially swayed or you know if you just look at it with a clean mind we there, there's no i don't know how you repair it so i totally agree with you I, I feel like now the one thing when you brought jamaica my uh father-in-law uh, he used to go there all the time and he talked about it all the time but now the topic the rhetoric is that jamaica is not safe people talk about mexico mexico mexico's got the cartels and it's commonplace for the cartel to kill people kind of like we have these shootings happening in the u.s it's commonplace now it's not front it's not the front page of the newspaper anymore same thing with the cartel stuff there's the same kind of thing in jamaica that uh, i've been hearing the one thing i like about the dominican republic why i'm choosing to raise my daughter here is it's been a relatively stable country Okay, there hasn't been big shifts or swings. Of course, it's riddled with some corruption at the top end, I'm sure, uh, in the government where some people make more money than they should and all that stuff. But what government is that not happening in? But as far as stability, it's got the highest GDP growth. We actually just I just saw an article. I'm going to do a video on it that we just took over as the most uh, traveled country in the entire Latin Americas. Okay, so we, we higher than Brazil, high, higher than Every single country that's in the Latin America, we are number one in tourism now. GDP growth is through the roof. You got an emerging middle class, kind of I talked about that in the beginning, an emerging middle class that is hungry, not hungry as in they need to eat, but hungry for success and growth of their family and those things that we were hungry for back in the 70s in North America. So if we follow the same traje tra trajectory, then my assumption is the Dominican Republic is perfectly tailor-made to be one of the top countries in the next over the next 20 30 40 years because what we're feeling everybody in france feels the same way about france what we feel is what everybody in italy feels any first world country feels like we feel right now and what are what are they doing the same thing me and you did i did it before you but the same thing and then we're crossing our t's dotting our eyes saying wait a minute the dominican republic seems to make sense and so I, i'm with you i 100 agree with what you're saying <laughs> But the, the, the other question was, um, I think you did a YouTube on this as well, but I haven't watched it as yet. Okay. Starting a bank account, because yes. you're going to need something like that, I think, in the Correct. DR and what you need. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, again, another another cool aspect of being here is, is that, okay? Um, the Dominican Republic, if you're North American from Canada, U.S., or Mexico, uh, not Europe, they share the same credit system that we have. That means that you have the ability to, so you go to the bank, I work, I work with two different banks. I work with Scotia Bank and I work with Banco Santa Cruz, okay? So if you go and apply for a loan or you need some assistance from the bank and wanna open an account, they have access to the same credit file, the same credit system that we do in North America. So that's great because uh, that makes you opening an account. I actually, by mistake, yesterday, used, just out of habit, used my, uh, my debit card from Banco Santa Cruz in the Dominican Republic here in Canada to buy gas. So that's actually an important thing. That's how intertwined the systems are and how, so what we have is we have our normal login to our account. Okay. Uh, my wife logs in, she manages the account, can transfer money between Canada, U S all that stuff happens pretty, pretty seamlessly. Uh, when you get there, I would set you up with either or, or both. Uh, at Scotia Bank or at Banco Santa Cruz. Uh, I'll set up a WhatsApp chat. You'll be able to talk with the, with the manager there. They'll explain to you in advance of you getting there what uh, you need to bring like your IDs, you know, proof of income, all like different financial things, uh, concerns, right? So they'll want all of that kind of stuff and bring it with you and then you get your account opened. Uh, next day you have your debit card. I think you have to put 500 pesos or dollars. I'm not sure one or the other into the account to open it. And you're off and running and you can use your debit card. You can go to the ATM and it's, very straightforward and very simple. As time goes on, if you want to access uh, some of your equity and you have good credit back home and all that, you're, I have many clients that are, have been able to get financing. These typically they're financing, uh, property has to be built. They don't finance pre-construction. So uh, typically uh, that anywhere from 50 to 70% is an option on financing. But again, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a pretty straightforward process. And once you get ramped up and get moving here, it's a lot easier. And then the quality of life. Remind me to talk to you about the quality of life aspect too before we in case I forget before we hang up. Units are very tight, okay? Now, is there other, that's related to the Dominicans and how they treat the 
uh, aging population. As far as other expats, other expats that are coming here are of similar mindset as what me and Alfonso were just discussing. They're of similar uh, economic stability, okay? Uh, therefore, similar likes, similar wants, similar reasons why they're coming here. So what you're going to find is in your age group, younger, let's say with a variation of 15 years, you're gonna find people that have the same wants, needs, and desires that you have. Therefore, making friends here with somebody from France, for you it's gonna be awesome because you got the French. So you're probably gonna end up with, you're gonna end up in a very short period of time with friends from Paris, I mean from France, from Spain, uh, you're gonna have friends in the Dominican Republic, then you're gonna have other like-minded North Americans that left for the same reasons, part or full-time left, for the same reasons you did. So you're gonna have a lot in common. Uh, so there's an enormous amount uh, especially in Las Trinas specifically. I'm not speaking to some of the other smaller towns in the Dominican Republic. I'm saying Las Trinas uh, is very, it's a perfect spot to start to make friends and develop kind of that social circle, if that's important to you, which I think you did say it is. Residency, which is your cedula, that's what they call it, which is your 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 citizenship, not citizenship card, but your card that you need to have uh, if you are a resident. And they, call, they call it the cedula here. Yeah, that takes and i'm going to be going through that process and documenting it as well for my subscribers but uh that takes i've heard two to three months and can cost anywhere from three to five thousand dollars per person so it's not the cheapest thing but it's not the most expensive but i've heard with pensioners there's different formulas that are in place that make it quicker and cheaper but we can i'll, I'll dig into that for you as well for the residency and then i think you're right after five years you can actually get your citizenship Okay, yeah, go ahead. I wanted to know, let's say in the long run, let's say you were about our age, in the long run, you decided to keep one of the properties. Which one would you prefer? If I had to keep one or the other? Yes, you know, you, you, you know, you can sell them, or you, you, you're done, finish renting, you decided, you know what, I only keep one of them. Which one would you prefer? Uh, I think it's like a, yeah, I, I think that, yeah, and the upcoming projects, because I, I know for a fact, I want one project. You know what, they're, they're, what, what you've kind of done is scaled yourself to have the best of both worlds, because when you come to Lost Trans, you're going to see something, which makes it very unique, and one is the ability to be so close to the beach, but be perched up. 500 feet up in the air so you're getting this bird's eye view very often in some places you get up in the mountains but you're so far away from the beach a 15 minute drive 10 minute drive something like this Los Serenas specifically in Bonita Hills you're perched up above the tree line looking at Playa Cason and Playa Bonita which is a beautiful view but it only takes you two and a half minutes in a golf cart that they have as part of the amenities to get to the beach okay so that's unique. That gives you the best of both worlds. You got that view. You've got a confiture project. Uh, Fifteen years there as well. Uh, it's going to rent phenomenal because it's a unique product. The amenities are all across the rooftop. You've got an infinity pool that overlooks the treetops and overlooks the ocean. Um, so you've got best of breed if you're going to be on a hill. But then the other project, you've done. You have the exact same thing, but you have best of breed oceanfront. Okay, so you've got two that are going to come down to a personal preference, really. That's what I would have to say. It's, do you like living on the ocean or do you like living over the ocean, kind of? And both offer a unique perspective. Both are gonna have the same sunset, but completely different sunsets, right? They're both gonna be the best sunset you've ever seen in your life, but they're gonna be two different, completely two different sunsets. Uh, you have a little bit more, it, it really would be a completely a preference thing. Me personally, I am more, I have one in Bonita Hills as well, as you know, right? So I currently live on the beach and because I've currently lived on the beach and my daughter got used to the beach and my wife and you know, we're, we're seconds away walking to the beach, like you would be versus getting in a golf cart and being two minutes away, I, I, I'm kind of leaning towards the beach. But there's times even between myself and my wife where we say, hey, should we move to Bonita Hills when it's done? But then our conclusion comes back to, no, 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 it's too nice to live on the, on the ocean. Um, so you've got best of breed of both, which one would you sell? Then it would come down to economics. So then at that point I would say, which one am I going to get the most money for and the biggest ROI, which one rents better than the other, you know, what's my personal usage, stuff like that. It would become economics that would dictate that, but you got the best in both. Yeah. Okay. So what I see is similar to what I, in terms of what Jamaica was 10 years ago. 
on the prices. You know, the, the, I sell these things that in Jamaica, like the ocean fund, that 15 years ago you could get for like 250,000. It's like over a million, two million. Now. Wow. That's phenomenal. You know, that, that really. No, that, 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 I like that information because I, I don't know that much about Jamaica's market, but if Jamaica could do that, God knows what Las Trinas is going to do. Because I think when you get her, you're going to say the beauty is, and Jamaica I heard is beautiful, but I've heard people that go to Jamaica that now come here say that this blows it away. So what's going to happen to Ocean from property in Las Trinas? Yeah. That's, that's good insight. The prices now in Jamaica, we were taking a look before. You can have, you know, like you know, studios now, like studios, you know, 400, something, 500 square feet. I'm talking about half a million. Now. Wow. I mean, it's, just, it's, just, it's crazy. It's the, the prices are just going through the roof. But you know what it is? It's a, it's a universal demand. The universal demand to be on the water is, it's just, it's, it, it will never go away. It's just. It doesn't matter if people are scared of global warming and tsunamis and everything else. The desire to be on the water is always going to drive. So oceanfront property is always going to be the best. Yeah. Okay. So, um, to, no, no, this is my next question. Then. Um, no, no, there's a rental program. And I, I, again, I, I spent yesterday, I think, and the day before, just going through a lot of your videos. Um, and, you know, what I got is that um, some of the projects, they do have a rental program, and it's, it's like 20%. Yes. Um, in terms of the fees and, um, and and I think the the one Bonita Hill has a rental program as well because uh, that there is a rental office or something like that there. I, I think you're right. Now Bonita understand. Hills is a little bit different, uh, and Playa Bayanas Residences is a little bit different. Bonita Bonita Hills, their developers are some of the largest in the country, and especially in Las Trinas. They have decided that they will internally manage the rental program for. The owners. I believe we have like 26 units there, or something. 24 units. I don't have the number in front of me, but they're going to manage that for all owners that are going to be renting. Reason being that they're not allowing for owners individually to do Airbnb, which the logic is sound, and I do understand it now that I've lived in Las Trinas for a couple of years and live in a project that owners will rent out their properties uh, at whatever rate they see fit based on their financial situations. So some people it's creating a big variance in prices so if you have somebody that either has too much money and doesn't care or doesn't have enough money but just rents it for too little so let's say you've got a two-bedroom oceanfront unit that somebody's going to decide to rent it for 25 dollars a night what they've done when it should be renting for 350 dollars a night what they've done is devaluated the other units in that project so in order to avoid that situation the developer decided to keep it standardized. They will handle the rental management. That fee is going to be in and around that 20%. Uh, they're going to handle that for all owners. So what that does for you and me actually as an owner is guarantees us to be at market levels, okay, to be at market prices for our units, you know. So Playa, Boni Playa Bayanas residences, that one is different. The developer will offer, but will also allow you to Airbnb on your own as well. Uh, we are now moving into the rental management space as well because our clients uh, are buying a lot of properties and they are requesting us to do it. So the need is there. So we're going to start doing that. So we would be able to offer you that service as well. Same standard pricing, the 20% uh, is kind of how you can uh, do the math on that. And that would handle, basically, it would make it hands-free for you. But if you're living there, I think you could pull it off on your own. Say if you decide you're going to live in Bonita Hills and you're going to rent out the other one, you could do it on your own, I think, if you wanted to. Before, and, you know, Detroit, you could really get a deal. Huh. During the pandemic, just like everything else, the, the, the prices of some of the homes doubled and tripled. Yes, I know. And we were having a lot of issues. Some of the, the people were having problems being rent and the city. And I, I just decided, you know, let's sell all of them. And, and the market went out. We put it, we put it on the market and... I mean, you get an off in like two days. Wow. That. So, Good for you. Yeah. So we have the last one now is in, is in escrow. So. Oh, wow. Amazing. Congrats. That's amazing that you did that. I missed it. I'm, I was sitting right across the river from them and stare. I, in the condo that I live in in Windsor, I look at the, the GM building. So I'm right on the riverfront there. And I, I kind of missed that. That one was right under my nose and I totally never invested in that market. I always regretted that. 
yeah, it's 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 um yeah, it, it's the you know but the, the thing is that nobody kind of foresaw that he would have had because a lot of it in Detroit you, you buy for for to, to get cash out of it yeah um, to get rental for cash flow correct yeah but not for appreciation we, we no no one expected the appreciation you know the, what happened during the pandemic is just yeah it's just crazy. it's you know no one expected that would have happened I think what you're doing is smart is liquidate freeing up some cash and reinvesting it into an emerging market because i don't it's not sustainable like well it's great and you have that appreciation but the person that buys it what's the plan with that because nobody can afford to rent it because just to get the roi and the new prices is impossible right so it's like yeah. it's an interesting uh, dynamics happening here but yeah congrats good for you cash yeah my husband happens to know brilliant man it's not because he's my husband Mm-hmm. So who knows? Maybe maybe my can recruit him for your business. He's good with numbers. His head is excellent. Yes. <laughs> and very logical. Yes, yeah, true. It's true. No, I I, I really can't wait. Right, right. You might want to recruit him seriously, because uh, this man is just good with everything. I don't understand this. <laughs> so, I mean, you go back. I'm serious. From the kitchen, do everything else you can. He's well rounded. He knows everything that, that's going on in the world. He knows about the GDP of every country almost. <laughs> Anyway, uh, no, that that's that, that is amazing. I can tell from our, our short conversation that you 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 have your pulse on kind of what's happening in the world, and I'm glad that I I feel a little more confident myself now that you're saying that, Miriam. That means that I might have my finger on the pulse of what's happening in the world too, if your husband agrees with me. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, no, my pleasure. I a ton of here. I appreciate Great. it. Great. Great. Okay. Awesome, guys. I'm uh, glad this was useful, and I will uh, I'll go to work yeah. on that uh, on that other unit. Absolutely. Thank you again. Thanks so much. Take care, Miriam. Thank Good you. talking to you. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right, guys. I hope you learned a lot from that client call. I think those are so, so useful for you to be able to understand the market and understand the opportunities, understand the Dominican Republic, understand Los Terrenos. This is an emerging market. Opportunities are endless for not just investment purposes, but also to start to live the life that you always imagined you wanted to live or are supposed to live when you retire. The thing is here, why wait until you retire? Why wait until it's too late? So we're here. My name is Cash. I'm president and CEO of real estate in LostRainus.com. Cash International Luxury Real Estate. We're in Los Trenes. We're in Santa Domingo. We're in Punta Cana and Cap Cana. We're able to guide you guys. We've done it. We're not just brokers. We're also investors. And it is one of our passions to guide North Americans and show them that they are able to truly live a life and able to say that they love where they live so on that note if uh, you're interested in investing in the dominican republic and you think your time is now join the hundreds of thousands of people that are making this move as well send me a direct whatsapp one five one nine five six seven one seven eight five. let me get you aligned either with myself directly or with my team And we will make sure that you one day can also say that you love where you live. All right, guys, take care and talk to you soon.